Welcome to another week of Caps Chat. I'm Cody Lefko. It's the voice of your Capitals here with two veteran Capitals players, Carson Bannell and Reed Pavich. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Good. It's It's been a while since you guys have seen each other now. Obviously, season shut down. Uh, there was a little bit of, of workouts together and, and trying to, you know, stay in shape and you get now you guys have sort of taken your separate paths but what have you been doing to to stay in hockey shape yeah i've just uh, been working out back home and you know skating on the treadmill back here and that's pretty much it. i've just been working out and skating back home that's yeah <laughs> i've been uh working out with jason johnson because he opened up uh like a couple weeks ago like a month ago so I've been doing that, and I really got into road biking during quarantine. So I, like, just, you know, on the weekends or, like, on my off days, I'll just get on the bike and just go to Madison. How, how many miles do you think that you go in a, in a weekend? Uh, on Saturday, I rode 35 miles. Good for you, Reed. Go down, downtown and back? I did. I, well, I live in Verona, and I was, like, rode all the way to, like, the rink. And I did, like, a big circle, went through Middleton, and then went through whole of Verona. And I went back to Epic, rode around Epic, and then took some back roads home. Guys, where, is it just a local rink that you've been skating at? Has there been anybody else there with you? No, oh, the rink, the rink in Alaska is closed because of COVID. The cases, the cases in the cross are going up, so everything's back on lockdown here. So, uh, no, I, the place I work out at has a skating treadmill, and I just skate on the treadmill there because uh, all the ice is closed. And then that's it's just where I work out, same place, so I work out there as well. And then I, I came up to Madison for a little bit to skate as well. Uh, how close is is like Minneapolis to you? Because are are any of their rings open? Have you looked into going that route? Uh, no, I haven't at all. Although it's like two two and a half two hours, so it's not that far. Okay, so probably about the same, maybe even yeah. a little further actually. Yeah. Yeah. What about what about off the ice on the non training portion? What do you do? I know trying to get you on has has been tough. You've uh, gone out and pretty much isolated yourself on a river or lake for a while. Yeah, I I fish a lot back home. I'm a big fisherman, so I'm always on the Mississippi fishing. And I just got big into golf too. I'm not too good ask. You can even ask Reed. I'm not too good at golf, but yeah, I went golfing. Still pretty fun. Two weeks ago, me, Carson, Kershaw, and uh, was it Herman? Herman, Lucas Herman. Um, yeah, so it was, it was pretty funny watching Carson try to hit the ball. <laughs> more more of a, a short game player? <laughs> oh, not yeah. at all. <laughs> He's a big, strong guy, but you think he could hit the ball a mile, but he doesn't keep <laughs> I feel like it's it's smoother and slower usually tends to go longer at this point. Whenever I try to overswing, it goes nowhere. So You're a big golfer, Cody? Oh, I haven't been I haven't been at all this year, but I did it a couple times in the past. Wanna get more into it though. Yeah. Yeah, do some time. Yeah, that's right. We're uh well, we moved but we were down in the same area. We could have gone to Hawks Landing together. I uh, golf at Hawks a lot. Um, probably like three days a week. So I like work out, skate, and then play golf. And I make I actually make pizzas up at Diamonds too. So that's like the clubhouse there. So I got a job there Wednesdays and Sundays. If any of the fans want to come out, and make pizzas there. Do you do that in the winter too, or strictly in the summer when no hockey's going on? No, yeah, I just do it in the summer. Okay. And Carson, you mentioned you're a big fisher too. Have you gone out with Frank? I know Frank seems to be. When you talk to somebody on our team, I feel like Frank is the big fisher. So. Yeah. No, I I haven't been out with Frank. He was in, he lives like two hours away from me, I think, something like that. So never got the chance to go with him. Okay. Uh, you know, next next step, I sort of want you guys to take us through your path to Madison and, and to the Capitals, because um, you guys actually crossed paths when you were younger playing in the youth organization. So I want you to sort of start us off and, and how you found your way to the Capitals organization. Yeah, so 
Um, I started playing caps my U14 year where Car Carson played up on our team. That's how I met Carson originally. And then I played my youth caps through U14, through U16, my second year U16. And then I got drafted to the caps my futures year. So the first year like you're eligible to get drafted. And I got called up that first year, three years ago, um, when it was like Garrett, Jake Suter, and Heath, Heath Luck uh, as the coaches. So I, that's how I kind of got all together. And then me and Carson got back together that year after. And then, yeah, and then this last year, too. That's kind of how it all got together. Yeah, Carson, take us through for you sort of what uh, what your path entailed. Yeah, I grew up in uh, Minnesota. Uh, it was till uh, second grade. It, till, yeah, till I was in second grade, and then I just started playing for – I was just playing for, like, my local teams, and then I played for the Minnesota Blades for – it was, like, five years. And then I played for them for five years, and then I also played for uh, Green Bay Junior Gamblers. That was my seventh grade year. And then I played I played uh, Caps my eighth grade year with Rito. And then the next two years I went to Shattuck and played. And I didn't get drafted uh, in the USHL. And Madison was just the closest USHL team to me. So then I just went to camp and made it out of camp. And I think that's sort of one of the, the biggest stories. You don't get a lot of guys that, excuse me, go to camp and make it. Obviously, Johnny Goudreau in the USHL is sort of the big one. But, you know, you at this point are along that path where, you know, the draft is coming up in a couple weeks, months at this point. It's up in the air. Um, but people are talking about it, you know, at, at least getting drafted at some point. You know, projections are over the place. And, and who knows when we come out of this, what will change. But, um, you know, you're, you're on sort of that same path as Johnny Goudreau, it seems. And, and that's a pretty good path for you to go along. Um, you're going, so unfortunately you're leaving us this upcoming year, but you are going to Michigan tech, um, you know, talk about tech and talk about, uh, you know, just how, again, how you talk to them, sort of what that process was like for you. Yeah. So I, I like Michigan tech, you know, just, it's, it's my favorite school. Uh, just everything about it. It's, it's, it's my lifestyle, you know? So I like everything up there, you know, that part of the woods is sweet up there. Uh, you know, it's, I love fishing. I love like all that outdoor stuff and that's, and that's who I am. So that's pretty much why I chose Michigan tech along with, you know, like the coaches and facility, the coaches were straight up, straight up with me and honest with me. And that's what, like, that's what mostly uh, bought me the most. And they just put it out on the table and, uh, and that's pretty much why like I took it and it was, it was, it's sweet up there. Now, have you gotten a chance? Um, I don't know if, if Tom Upton, the new coach for the Capitals, called you at all. I know everybody knows you're going in, but I'm sure there's still a little bit there trying to trying to see if that is still the case, especially with, you know, the coronavirus and what's going on, and it sort of changes scholarships and, and eligibility. Um, have you had any sort of conversations with the coaching staff and, and taken, uh, you know, sort of what you think of them? Well, uh, no, I, I mean, I mean, like, yeah, I've talked about, I talked uh, to them a little bit about like when I'm coming up and everything, but that's, that's about it. Really. That's about it. I just didn't know. Cause obviously Reed, you're in a completely different scenario coming back for another year um, where you were able to talk to the new coaches, both Tom and Corey. Uh, and, you know, we sort of want to see what's your take on it. What have you gotten from those conversations and, and where do you feel it'll help to take the capitals? Yeah. I mean, I had really good conversations with, uh, Coach Upton called me like right when he got the job and then we've been kind of texting a little bit and I've only heard great things from people like around Madison. Um, obviously Corey played, was coaching Janesville um, last year and I was, you know, talking to people that knew him and was coached by him and same with Coach Upton and I've only heard only great things about him and, you know, I'm really excited because of like the Zoom calls you did with them, they were just talking about how they want speed and skill and their biggest thing is compete. And I feel like I kind of do all that things by like just working hard on the ice, it's like every shift and doing all those things. So I'm, I'm really excited. 
Carson, do you feel the re- you're laughing over there? Do you feel that Reed fits those things? Is he going to give us yeah, of course speed, skill, and grit? <laughs> yeah, are you chirping? <laughs> no, I say you, you get dirty. I know you get dirty. I'll get dirty. <laughs> I know you get uh, dirty. And then Reed, you're you're one of those guys as well. I know that a lot of people sort of look for like Mick Messner um, when you talk about home hometown kids. Obviously, you know from the Madison area played here for the Capitals and then went on to UW for you. You're here from the Madison area, obviously in Verona, you've played for the Capitals. Now this will be, I think, part of your fourth season. Um, and then college is on the horizon. I mean, have there been, we don't need to know schools or anything like that, but have there been conversations? Is that sort of the way that, that we could see maybe early in the season for you? I, I mean, yeah, it's the plan. Obviously I did talk to some colleges last year and, I hope to talk to some more this year and hopefully make my plan this upcoming year and see what happens. And for you guys both, you you took a huge jump this year. Carson, for you, uh, I think you were at 20 points your first year in Madison. And then this past year, uh, you were a point per game. You were on track to stay at a point per game, uh, take the Madison Capitals record away from Chase Brand, who, who broke it the year before, 54 points. Um, and then for Reed, same thing. I mean, you had one goal, I think, in each of your first two seasons. And this year you scored, and I think it was the first or the second game of the year and, and picked it up from there. So I guess for both of you, what what do you think attributed to your giant increase in production this year? Um, I'd, say, I'd say going through what we went through last year, you know, it taught us a lot mentally to stay, stay positive and just keep trucking along and just keep – you know, just keep pushing and things will finally go our way. So I think last year was a big part of, uh, like, our success this year, along with, you know, like, our line mates as well. Like, that one – the one line that was Kristoff, Reed, and I at the beginning of the year, we, we were pretty good. So, I mean, that that started the season off hot, and that's uh, – like, we carried that throughout most of the year. Yeah, like Carson said, I feel like our first year – um, well, my second year is first year. We went through a lot of like diversity and saw um, how like the leaders led and how what they had to do. And I feel like we kind of took that and took it into this year. And like me, Carson, and Pap, and and then Pap obviously left, and then it turned into Ryan. We all had really good chemistry and we were really close, and it kind of went really good, and it was really fun, and yeah. All right, let's go on then. I, I had you guys fill out. I will say, Carson, you're you're a giggly guy. You like to laugh. It's a lot of the time. This is, and maybe it was Reed's connection early on. I don't know, but this is like the longest I think I've seen you be able to like hold a firm stance for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> you just like to be around people. You just like to have fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, back to what I was saying. Let's go back. Uh, we'll take a look at those questionnaires I had you guys do. Uh, we'll help out a little bit. And we'll start off with the movie side of things. Um, for Carson, you had some good ones in there. Lone Survivor, I, I don't think we've seen. One person may have had it. The other guy's Wolf of Wall Street. I mean, instant classic. And then I like it. You had Rocky and Back to the Future in there as well. Those are those are good, a little bit older movies. Yeah. Those are good ones. And then read for you – Sticking with the comedy, um, bench warmers. I mean, that's right off the bat, one of those things that I think you can watch any time and, and just crack up every time, even though you know it's coming. Yeah, 100%. It's, uh, yeah, favorite movie by far. Uh, and then I like it, though. Both of you guys had the other guys in there. It seems that Will Ferrell, I don't know how he does it. For years, he's just been at the top of the game. Every time the other guys came out within the past 10 years and I mean, is that something that you guys watched or the team watched together? Or, you know, how does it end up on both of your lists? I, I, I've always watched Will Ferrell, and I always thought he was so funny. Just starting off with, like, the elf. Literally every movie he's in, it's, it's literally it's so funny. I don't know. Yeah, other guys, other guys, when my, it's, it's, a, it's a good movie. I think Kurz and I maybe watch it, like, two or three times ever since it came out on Netflix. So it's a pretty good movie. Uh, and then Reed rounding out years, Happy Gilmore again, another one. Adam Sandler always near the top. Um, Talladega Nights, and then Miracle. A bunch of people being in the hockey world, I feel like you have to put Miracle on there. And and yeah. somebody like Carson, he he leaves it off. I don't know. Is that a, is he a true <laughs> hockey guy at that point? Well, obviously, obviously Miracle, <laughs> one of the, you know one of the fave movies, but 
that's just what everybody says when you play hockey miracle it's all, that's what they always say it's your favorite movie but you can have other favorite movies too like in this organization though it has to be yeah <laughs> yeah look at the look at the jersey in the background look at the jersey which side, that side <laughs> right there i don't know what side it's on <laughs> Right there, the Bob jersey. And you guys, actually, on that point, you guys got to play in a couple of different Miracle on Ice games. I mean, you know, how how much fun are those? And especially this year, wearing those jerseys against Green Bay and those Russian jerseys. I mean, how, how much fun are those to be a part of? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was sweet. Especially, we, we won that game, right? Yeah, yep. that was yeah, that was a good win too. game. Yeah, that, cool. that game was, that thing, that was sweet. So, you know, the, everything, everybody was a part of it. Everyone on the bench was up and energized, so it was pretty sweet. Yeah, I thought I thought it was pretty cool how we like uh, we were calling everyone by their, like their numbers. So like whoever like for Carson was like he had his little nickname, and we'd be like that a boy Jimmy every time Stover had like a save and stuff. Like so it was it was really cool, and like the crowd was into it. And I just thought each year I've done it, it was it's always like the best game, my favorite game by far. And I, th- I think that one of my favorite people in there, Zach Kern got one start this year. He played a, a game in a period. That's all he had. But in that game, he dressed up just like the backup. He had the towel around the neck. He was coming out with the same fire that he had. I think he was, as far as a, a role player goes and trying to match his movie counterpart, I think he was spot on. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. Hearn, Hearn was definitely a character and definitely a, <laughs> get the boys going. <laughs> uh, great we'll backup goalie. Great backup goalie. <laughs> uh, we'll shift over to TV shows and going through again. Read um, All American, Trailer Park, Outer Banks, The Office, and Gossip Girls. And I'll start uh, with The Office. Always like to ask, how many times do you think that you've seen the entire show? At least, uh, at least four, probably. Yeah, four. I always just turn it on like right before bed and just binge watch it. And then definitely during quarantine this year, I was just nonstop the office. And we watched it four times in this quarantine alone. Probably, probably. Do you watch an order or do you just kind of go whatever episode you feel? So, yeah, I've seen it so many times that like, I know like some like episodes are really funny. So at night I'll start at that episode and just, keep going through that season or something like that so i'll kind of just jump everywhere uh, and then and then gossip girl in there i know that's one that it seems a lot of people like it had a big following when it came out it went away and then the last couple of years at least for me in hockey it seems like it has had a huge resurgence and it, it's been passed around the hockey world and in, in you know in masses yeah i mean i feel like a lot of people think it's like a real like girly movie but you know what it's a good uh, like show, but I, I like it. Uh, and then Carson on your side, I think one other person at Entourage, um, fantastic show. Obviously oh, HBO not yeah, on, but my favorite show. Every single person in that show is great. Ari Gold, one of the best characters in television. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Outer Banks Ballers just ended. Another one. I'm a big sports guy. I mean, you guys being in hockey, I'm you know big sports guys. Ballers, excellent show to watch. Um, Ozark, and then Jack Ryan. Nobody's had Jack Ryan on there. Why does that crack your top five then? Uh, I don't know. I got I got really big into it when uh, the first season came out, and I binge I binge that pretty fast. And then the second season just came out on Prime, and I watched that pretty fast too. So I don't know. I, I liked them. They're pretty good. I think that seems to be. I mean, you put Ozark on your list, but that seems to be what people are doing with Ozark as well. Is everybody binged it right at the start and then they just waited and waited and there was so much yeah. anticipation that it came out and everybody was done the day again and, and everybody sat again after. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go on to video games. Are you guys two big gamers or is it sort of just, we're going to fill it out to fill it out? I, yeah, uh, I don't play video games really. No. I used to play. I used to play a lot actually. I think we can tell that you used to play because if you look at what you had on here, Oh, no, Reed, the first thing you had on, sorry, was NHL 07. On the Wii. On the Wii. On the Wii. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We had, Reed. like, the double O's. Yep. You can yeah, tell the Reed. Slap shot on the Wii. Slap shot? Slap shot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sweet. <laughs> and I got a Wii Sports on there, too. 
But yeah, I mean, you can tell that Reed was doesn't really play anymore. Just on the, his first three, NHL 07, Wii Sports, and Mario Kart. I mean, not some of the newer games. <laughs> yeah. Big Wii guy. We got the Wii, like, when I was younger for Christmas, and I was just big on that. That's when it, That was, like, the only time I played video games. And I tried doing Fortnite. Fortnite <sighs> made me mad, for sure. I just die every time. Are guys who are on the team, are they big gamers? Because I feel like everybody I talk to, there's such a divide. Either some guys are big gamers, but most guys, it seems, don't even don't even go near it anymore. Yeah, I mean, I used to play with T-Bone, Jack, and T-Bone, Jack, and I, uh, we went through, like, a, this one spurt where we used to play all the time. And then uh, I, know, I know Brock and Frank play all the time. Brock, yeah. Rock would complain we had community service in the morning so he'd be able to wake up and play video games. So. <laughs> yeah, Brock Brock was a big, big gamer. He would, yeah. Morning to night. I don't really play that much anymore, though. That's, when I had the Weiss brothers on here, they were talking about how they'll stay up real late, especially yeah. at the beginning of quarantine, and they would just uh, play <laughs> pretty much till they passed out. So, yeah. yeah, like I talked, I talked with Stover a couple weeks ago. I talked with I had some other players on here too, but Corny and Carrick, and it seems like just everybody's like, ah, I don't, I don't really play video games anymore. It's just not what we do. Yeah. So yeah. It seems different than in years past, but it's not a bad thing. Obviously, you know, you can see the production on the ice sort of go up as well. So maybe there's a direct correlation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then on to songs again, sort of the the different the different genres for each of you uh read a little bit of country a little bit of rap obviously um and then carson you went pretty much straight old school you went old school rock um I don't know, red hot chili peppers is an old school rock i feel like that's hard to say that was when i was growing up they were huge um but i mean carson i, I love yours i like sort of that older stuff guns and roses sweet child of mine uh sweet home alabama by leonard skinner <laughs> Billy Dean, you got to throw some Michael in there, and then two Red Hot Chili Peppers on. Yeah. Phenomenal. Are those – okay, are those your favorite songs, or are those, like, the songs that when you think, I got to get ready for a hockey game, I'm going to throw on? Or oh, did those, those are just some of my favorite songs. Those are some good tunes. That's good. And then read for you, same thing. I mean, are those ones that, that get you pumped up for games, or are those ones that you're going to be driving your car back from Chipotle towards your house? And you're trying to figure out what to listen to. Uh, I'd say yeah, in the car. I have some different songs for I'll, and for games. I'll probably listen to some rock or some rap and kind of just like that high intensity kind of music. So did you guys? Did you guys ever take over the aux cord this past year? I know in talking with people, it's always Brandon that sort of had it, but uh, there were some different people spread out. Did you guys ever control it? I uh, think no. I, I, we only shut it off a couple of times when certain guys had it, you know, when, when, uh, I, it was, Stibbs. yeah, we turned it off. <laughs> Cordy said guy. when him and Stibbs had it. <laughs> I yeah. turned it off when Stover had it because he just play, he just play rap the whole time. Yeah. And, you know, Patty would just turn on his and Carrick songs on in the locker room. And yeah. Yeah. That wasn't, no one really was thinking that. What sort of songs did Patty and, uh, and Carrick play? The songs that they would make. Yeah, they make like, oh, like their actual songs. songs. <laughs> yeah. So there was like Dude, a Patty phase. And they, when Patty got know. here, he thought he was like really cool. They had rap songs. And yeah, they're, they're good songs. But after a while, he just keeps on, keep uh, putting them on repeat. And you're just like, yeah, we're going to have to turn that off. <laughs> and you said Carrick was a part of that? Yeah. Yeah, they like did a little feature with uh, um, Carrick. So, that's, that was his name. What was it again? I forgot. Hana Amastana. Hana Amastana. And then, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I knew, I think that we knew that, that Patty put out some music, and I think Stover was on part of them. Because uh, when they got traded to Madison, I think they created a, a little rap on TikTok. Um, so we knew that Patty yeah. was a little into music, and then Christian was there. I don't think anybody knew that Hunter was in that same boat and, and trying to trying to help out a little. <laughs> yeah, it's, become a feature artist. Funny. <laughs> so if you guys got the aux cord, what what sort of things are you throwing on for pregame that are getting everybody ready? I throw on Eminem. Some, some classic rock. Yeah, I'd play some Eminem. Maybe some uh, 
Motley Crue. Yeah, Motley Crue for sure. Um, PDC. I would maybe put on some like little like dubstep or whatever, you know, like those mixes, like uh, Big Booty mi- remixes. It's not dubstep, man. What is that? Oh, it, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's Reed, good music. knowledge of music has not expanded. <laughs> Yeah, I just asked for playlists and from guys, and I'll just listen to those. It's going to be a big thing next year. Is Last year, we went to Brandon, and we asked him for uh, what the warm-up mix would be when you guys come on the ice. Now it's going to have to be someone like you. You better start thinking. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I guess it's going to be a lot of country. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think fans are going to mind it. So. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Me and right, Kershaw. Life. I'm sorry. No, good. I was good. just, I was saying, me and Kershaw will probably make a cool playlist for, for warm ups. There you go, put it together about half an hour. You guys got about thirty minutes to go through, so figure Perfect. it out. <laughs> um, last sort of segment here. Always like to ask some good questions, um, and we'll start off with who would you guys say is sort of your closest NHL comparison? I'd probably Brad say Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Marshawn. I'd say like Ryan Getzloff. Why do you think that? You know, we're kind of same same height, kind of same player. More of you know, use our body. That more of that you know, uh, north south game, not east to west. Uh, just a big body in front of the net and in close, good hands and tight. So, Reed, what about you? He's Brad, Brad Marchand, Marchand. Who you're going with? Yeah. Why yeah. do you feel that? I don't know. I wouldn't know if I was like that, like sneaky of like, uh, you know, cheap shots, but I, I would say like, we, I got, we got like the same speed skill. Um, he's he really good at like creating stuff and like coming hard out of like the corners and all that kind of good stuff. And he's a 200 foot player, plays both ends of the ice. Do you play the mind games like he does though? No, that's what I was saying. I mean, I, I'll, I'll try to do it. Yeah, it's true. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> no, yeah, but I'd say Brad Marchand. I just, I, I, I'm not that sneaky, though, like him. Uh, who would you say between you two has the bigger social media presence? Carson. We don't really post that much. Yeah, we're not big social media guys. I'm TikTok's included in social media. Oh, probably me then. Yeah. I mean, well, I made like, I haven't even, I've made like three TikToks. I know, Carson, you always liked it when you could get Will to do something this past year. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> I don't know. Reed likes to make TikToks with his girlfriend. I made, I made one. No, you made more than one. <laughs> Reed was sitting in a dog pool the other day with his girlfriend. No, that was unreal. So it was like a really nice day out. And couldn't go, we couldn't go to the pool because they do like this new thing where you got to make like a pretty much like a tea time to go to the pool because of Corona. So I had this little blow up pool. So I blowed it up, put a little pool in there and put a little music on and just hung out. It was pretty fun. We got a, I mean, we have a dog, but yeah, we got a little, like the little dog bath one and we put yeah. it in our backyard and we'll go sit in there. Absolutely. Exactly. It's like, it's pretty big though. It's got like little chairs in there and stuff. It's like called the relaxation station. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, all right, looking at the whole team from this past – let's go the past two years. So, Carson, you're two years on the team, Reed, the last two. Um, if you guys were to be in a tag team wrestling match, who's, who are you taking in the ring as your partner? Probably Carrick. <laughs> really? No, I'm just kidding. I'd probably say <laughs> – I'd probably say uh, – probably Suits. I'd probably do uh, Hearn. <laughs> probably Hearn or, it. Hearn or Suits. Hearn's a volunteer fireman. I don't think a lot of people know that. A volunteer fireman, he's probably got some yeah, strength under there. Exactly. He won't mess told me he saved a lot of lives. Yeah. What did you say, Carson? He saved a lot of lives? Yeah, he's told me, he, like, uh, told me he saved a lot of lives, and he told me all the stories, but it was pretty cool. Yeah, I think Hearn's got a really cool backstory to him, but 
Yeah, I think uh, I think he wouldn't be a bad person to pick for this. I think he'd know what he was doing a little more than people give him credit for. Uh, yeah, he's yeah he's a character. Yeah, I'd take him in suits, him or suits, for sure. If you guys were to go to a, a sad movie with the teams of the past couple of years, who who's going to be the guy that that you can pretty much bank on crying during it? Definitely Reed. Definitely Carson. <laughs> Definitely Carson. <laughs> if you guys went on a road trip, who is most likely to leave some of their stuff behind, either in the locker room or at the hotel? Pokey. Corny. Uh, I don't know. Who or Jack? Uh, no, I'd say I'd say either Pokey or Reed. Me. Reed, the amount of times that you leave your phone in the bathroom stall. <laughs> Yeah, I've I've done that. <laughs> like one time. No, it's been multiple times. Dude, maybe you. No. You forgot your whole bed that one time. Dude, my bed didn't fit half the time in the bus. Me and Carson just have little beds on the ground. It's pretty nice. You get just do the egg crate mattress. Yeah, like little temporary foam things. Yeah. You put on top of your bed. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Um, sort of Carson's comment sort of leads us into the next one. Who on the team is most likely to uh, drop their phone like the day after buying it? Probably, yeah, probably me. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Couple people in Federy, they're pretty confident you've done that already. So <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 looking at my phone right now. Probably it's probably me. <laughs> um, if the whole team had a had an eating contest. Who's gonna Who's gonna take home that belt? Steve. Yeah, for sure, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I think that this is something I did. I did this interview with Steve. I think he was the third week that I did this, and I that was one that he was like confident, and he was like, "It's me by far," and I think he's really proud of it too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's uh, something. <laughs> um, who is most likely to go in for a big hit? And it gets sidestepped and just go straight into the boards. Kurz. Rick. Yeah. Kurz or Ricky. Yeah. Either way. Um, and then last one here. In your time playing junior hockey, what's been the best USHL arena you've been to and what's been the best atmosphere? I think Sioux Falls was the coolest one, but the, I think the coolest atmosphere was Green Bay. Green Bay's sweet to play in. The fans are just loud and it's awesome there. Yeah, we, we got Dash for Cash there this year too. That was Dash for Cash is probably their biggest game, and that was one of the loudest arenas that we've heard. Yeah, I would agree with that. But also, probably Waterloo, the New Year's Eve game, that was probably yeah. pretty, that was that was sick with all the bells and stuff. But yeah, definitely Green Bay. It's, they're always loud and they always pack their tall rink and stuff. It's pretty cool. And pro- yeah, for sure, Sioux Falls got the best rink. Cool. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming on, Reed. Thanks for sorting out your issues and figuring yeah, out sorry. how we can get you here. And Carson, you know, take some time, go fishing. I'm sure you haven't yeah. done it enough yet. So <laughs> uh, thanks for coming on, guys. Yeah, thank you. All right. Thanks, Cody. See ya. Bye. Bye, Reed. Bye, Carson. Love you. <laughs>